Welcome friends. Um, I hope some of you are here. This is my first Facebook Live. I'm Christina Steves, a Stampin' Up! independent demonstrator in the Northeast US. Um, if you're joining me live, let me know that you're here by leaving a comment. And um, I might not be able to see or get your questions as they come in, but I promise that I will answer them as soon as possible afterwards. Um, I would also appreciate if you would care to share this video with your friends who might be interested so that they can join the fun. Um, everyone, if you, if you missed the live, you can still catch it um, when I repost this to my YouTube channel and all the supplies that I use tonight, I'm going to um, post them on my blog So, and I'll link to both of those below. Um, the project that I'm demonstrating tonight features my product of the week, which is the Takeout Thinlets dies. They are new in the Stampin' Up! Holiday catalog. Um, and even though the project that I'm showing tonight is for Halloween, this can be used um, for many different occasions. There's all different shapes in here and tags, and of course the takeout box. Um, so uh, let's get started. So this is the little box that we're going to make tonight. And you'll need two pieces of 6x6 cardstock or pattern paper, depending which you're going to use. Um, and this one, I use Lemon Lime Twist cardstock. And you have to cut out two of the boxes to make a box. Because the shapes, they kind of go together to, to make the box. So we'll just put this on the side. And so I've cut these out with the Big Shot. And if you want to stamp or emboss these, you have to do that before you put the box together. So I'm going to take some Lemon Lime Twist ink and the Spooky Sweeps stamp set. And uh, Spooky Sweets stamp set. Yeah, I can speak tonight. And we're going to use um, the Moon and we're going to use the Spooky Sweets. The Happy Halloween and this little cloud or fog looking shape here. So we're going to take out our shape and mount it on the acrylic block because this is a clear mount stamp. And the easiest way that I found to do this is to put it upside down and then stick it to your cling. And we're going to open up our lemon lime twist ink and ink it up and just do a test to make sure that everything's going well and it's not doing any smudging or anything. And we're just gonna go ahead and stamp this randomly to create a little pattern. We're gonna turn it around to make sure that we get coverage all over. The bottom doesn't really matter and these tab pieces on the sides don't really matter either. You don't really have to stamp those because nobody's gonna see them but the top of the box and the front panels, you will see those. So you wanna make sure that you have some green smog going on on them so that they look nice and creepy for Halloween. So I hope you all have a copy of the new catalog. It's been a lot of fun to go through it and play with all the new um, stamp sets and of course, with all our new ink colors that we have from the um, from the color update, it's been a lot of fun working with all of those. Now, another thing that I want to show you to clean off the stamps, we have a new um, Simply Chamois, and I know a lot of other companies have come out with it. Um, Stampin' Up has their version of it now, and it always stays wet. And you just clean off your stamps like this. Um, you don't need any Stampin' Mess or anything like that. I know it looks dirty. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, but it's actually clean um, and you just rinse it off with water and it's ready to use again. It comes nice and pretty purple, but as it gets loved, as you can see, it gets a little messy. Um, we also sell these empty stamp cases. Um, there are four pack, I believe they're like $6 in the catalog. And um, if you leave it open just a little bit, um, it won't get moldy because, I'm sorry, that's my Instapot, my rice is ready. <laughs> um, so you leave it wet in here, but if you leave it open just a little bit, it won't get moldy or musty or anything like that. So we're done with that stamp. And we're going to put that aside. I also have a little tag that I've cut out also from the die cut set. 
using the Big Shot, um, this little tiny tag. And we're going to use the Memento Black Ink, because that's our new black ink that we have in the catalog. They got rid of the regular basic black. And I'm going to take the little Happy Halloween and mount that. I like to mount my sayings diagonally so that I'm not um, relying upon the block to make it square because I always mess it up and it never comes out straight if I do it that way. So I'll just line it up and give it a stamp. And there we have our little Happy Halloween. We'll just put that to the side and I'll clean up with the chamois again. And we're going to decide which of these, <clears throat> excuse me, is going to be the front. And it would be either one of these two big panels because those are going to be your fronts. And I will take the moon and mount that on another block. And we're going to ink it up. You just want to make sure that there's a score line right here. You want to make sure that you're not stamping above that because then it'll roll on the image will roll up on top of the uh, the top of the box and you really don't want that to happen so I'm going to do a couple of tests to make sure that my black is nice and solid which of course it's not I probably need to re-ink this pad but you'll get the idea so you're going to stamp your moon to the side and then you're also going to take the spooky sweet saying and we're going to mount that also onto our block. And we're going to stamp that right next to our moon. And it's as simple as that. Okay, and now that that's all clean, we'll put the ink away or else I'm going to wind up with my arm in it because that's the way I roll. So now you're going to take your bone folder and you want to um, you want to fold on all your score lines. And you want to use a bone folder because you want to make sure that all of your score lines are nice and crisp and all your folds are nice and crisp. You're going to take the tops and you're going to fold them back onto the front. So we'll do that on both of the pieces. And then you're going to take your bottoms and you want to fold everything in to the bottom and on this side in to the bottom so we'll do the same on your other piece into the bottom and into the bottom and then you have your side tabs actually we're going to fold those back that way they stay out of the way when you're putting your box together so we'll fold that on the outside like we did the other pieces for the top now having it facing upside down you're going to take your tabs and you're going to fold them in and i know that this is technically the front but it's going to be on the inside so nobody's going to see it so you're going to go around and you're going to fold in all of these four tabs and i find the best adhesive to use whenever you're constructing anything three-dimensional is you want to use either the red tape or you want to use the tear and tape um, I have really bad arthritis in my hands, so I can never get the tape to tear because my fingers aren't very strong. Um, so I always wind up cutting them, but I promise you that this does actually tear. And when you buy the rolls, it comes in a quarter inch and an eighth inch, and that's how you get them in a pack. So on the bottoms, just I'm going to pick one, one side because you only have to put the adhesive on one side. And I'm going to put a couple of pieces of the tear and tape. Let me get some junky scissors that I don't mind getting adhesive on. I'm going to cut a couple of pieces, about three should do it, and we're going to put these onto the bottom. It doesn't matter if it goes over because you can just roll it up onto where it needs to be. And of course I can't get anything straight because I'm on camera. So I hope you're all laughing because I'm laughing too. And we're going to pull up the backing and just roll in the adhesive that's stuck. And 
that piece and that piece. Oh, it's not stuck down quite. And that piece there. There we go. And fold all those in. And then you just want to match up so that you're going to wind up with like a, a cross type shape. And you're going to line those up. And I usually find that if I turn it upside down, I can make sure that they all wind up even. So that creates the bottom of your box. And it's actually nice to have the double there so that it sticks really well. And it makes the box nice and solid because you have the two layers of cardstock there. So then you're going to flip your box over to the front side. And you're going to take your eighth inch tearing tape and you're going to put some adhesive on each one of the tabs. So you just need one piece for each side that you're doing. So we'll start over here. Just making sure that the tape is on the tab and not on any of the side panels of your box. And if you rub on it, you get it to stay. And if you have trouble getting the pieces to come up, like if your nails are too long or too thick because you have artificial nails or something like that, just use a piercing tool. I wish I could find my new um, take your pick tool because that has a piercer on it, but I can't find it. It's somewhere in the jungle of my studio here. Um, so I'm just going to use the old piercing tool that I have. You can also use tweezers if you have them. They work really well to get these little sides off. Okay, now to put the box together, what you're going to do is you're just going to go around and do each one and you're gonna fold it in and make sure that the tops right here meet up because if they meet up, then everything will be fine. And you just work your way around to do all four sides. And you just fold it in and then add a little pressure and then the last one. And what I like to do is put it on its side and I take my bone folder and I just press down on all of those tabs that we just glued in place to make sure that they're really adhered really well. So there's your box. And it's tiny, but you can fit a lot in this box. I can actually get 10 Hershey Kisses in there, which is a pretty decent little trick or treat or um, a really nice favor for a Halloween party or if you have a classroom full of kids that you have to give treats to, um, you can put whatever you want in these and you put them together pretty quickly because um, I know classrooms are pretty big, like 25, 30 kids. Um, so we're gonna put some Hershey Kisses in there and like I said, we're gonna put all 10 in so that you can see that I'm not lying. We don't wanna give them the stamp. Um, put them in, give it a shake. And then you fold those sides in and you close the two flaps up just like that and you have your little box so i'm going to take this new glitter tool ribbon organza ribbon i'm sorry our new glittered black organza ribbon and i'm going to make a bow for the top of this so the way i like to make a bow so that you don't really waste a lot of ribbon is you're going to Take your ribbon, still on the spool, and you're gonna take about three or four inches, you're gonna make a loop. And then you're gonna make another loop. Or as we like to say when we're little kids, bunny ears. And you're gonna cross them over and put them through. So now, since we have a tag that's gonna go on here, what I wanna do is put the tag on first before I tie it. So I'm just gonna slide that in. Slide it to about the middle, where the middle of the bow is going to be. And then we're going to do our bunny ears on either side of it. Cross them over, put it under, and pull it through. And then you can, you can sit and play and adjust to make your loops as big or as small as you would like them to be. I'm not going to take too much time to fuss because we're on film and I have a couple of other variations of this box that I want to show you just so I can see how versatile it is. 
So I'm going to take my ribbon scissors. I have so many pairs of scissors. One is just for ribbon. One is for when I want to cut things that I don't care if it gets wrecked. And the other one is for paper. And um, I'm also a quilter. So I have fabric scissors that nobody's allowed to touch um, because I only use them for fabric. So let's clean up a little. And I'm going to take one of our glue dots. We have mini glue dots. And I'm going to put just a dot on the back of the ribbon and pop it on the top of the box. It helps if I get the dot on the ribbon. There we go. So there you go. Nice little boxes here. Now, any of you who share this video or comment on this video, I'm going to do a little drawing. Um, later, I'm going to use a random generator and whoever it chooses, I'm going to send them a set of Halloween boxes that I've made. Um, let me show you some more that I've done for Halloween. This one here, I use the basic black ink. I, sorry. I use, of course, the, the memento black ink to stamp the no tricks, just treats from the spooky sweets stamp set and basic black cardstock. But I also used some designer series paper from the new Toil and Trouble um, designer series paper. And there's a panel die cut that's this um, fat top square, I can't remember the, the correct term for that um, shape. And I cut out four of them from four different of the patterns and just adhered those to the side of the box just to make it a little bit of a different one. And this one is super cute. Um, I saw this on fellow demonstrator Rachel Tessman. She, her website is, um, let me see, her, her website is um, stampyourart.com. Sorry, Rachel. Um, and she made a box like this. She used the leaf ribbon that we have in the main catalog, but I'm out of it, so I just use a little regular ribbon. Um, and I used the um, pumpkin pie paper, and I used pumpkin, pumpkin pie ink and a sponge and just sponged around all the sides before I assembled it. I assembled the box. Now, she used the bat punch the new spooky bat punch and took one of the black um punched out black paper bats and cut it apart to make the eyes the nose and the mouth um on hers but i had i don't have that punch yet i'm waiting it was supposed to come today it hasn't come yet um hopefully it will be in my shipment tomorrow um but i used in an old paper pumpkin halloween stamp that had the jack-o-lantern face so i made the jack-o-lantern face on there and um, the trick-or-treat saying here is from the Cauldron Bubble stamp set that matches the designer series paper that I used in the box beforehand. So that's another new stamp set that we had. So those are the Halloween boxes that I make. Um, now, of course, this treat box isn't just for Halloween. You can use it for just about any holiday, any occasion. Like here, I used our copper foil paper, and we have a new tin tile. I don't know if you can see it. Let me move it a little closer. No, nope, my light isn't, isn't doing it justice. But um, the copper foil paper, and you use the tin tile die to give it a really nice texture. And remember, if you're going to emboss or stamp on this, you want to do that before you assemble the box. And the little... Thankful for you, on one of the panels, I stamped with um, early espresso ink, and the saying there is from the Many Blessings stamp set, which is also new in the new holiday catalog. And I love it because it has images and sayings for all the different fall holidays. So I figured this one is nice for a thank you in the fall, or it could be for Thanksgiving. You use it for your place settings, and you just put a little brown bow on the top um, and I use dimensionals to give it a little boost on there. And also for a fall themed, I used the Nature's Poem 
designer series paper. So here's an entire box made out of the di designer series paper. And I use this really cute leaf paper because I thought it was really pretty. I use the, um, the heart shaped die cut from the Take Out Thin Lips dies and stamped many blessings from the, from, from the many blessings stamp set. And this, um, twine here is from the nature's twine from the, from that, um, the same, the same, sorry, the same suite as the, uh, the paper comes from. So I thought that would be cute for the fall also. And let's not forget about Christmas. This Christmas box, um, I used designing, designer series paper from the Dashing Along, which is a hostess only freebie for hostesses who have a party of $250 or more in the month of September. So if you'd like to do a party, um, contact me and we'll see if we can get you this paper and a lot of other free and half price items. So another designer series paper box and the Merry Christmas is also from the, the um, Many Blessings set, and that's stamped in, um, in Cherry Cobbler ink, and I used the Garden Green to do the boughs, and I added some of our new red rhinestones to make the little holly berries, and this is one eighth inch real red ribbon. So I thought those were really cute, making really nice stocking stuffers, or again, um, you know, if you have a classroom of kids, or something like that, you can you can make these for them. Just a little treat box. Now, they're not just for holidays though. Here are some great ideas for um, wedding favors or a bridal shower that I came up with. This is the white sparkle paper and I embossed it with the swirls and curls embossing folder to make that pattern. And then I took some pool party ink and with a sponge, I rubbed it over it to give it some color and texture. And you don't have to use the pool party blue, of course, for this. You can make the colors match whatever the wedding is. Um, I had a little sparkly, a, a little glitter ribbon that I actually found at Michael's. Um, I didn't have any ribbon that I thought would be appropriate that was stamping up for this um, in stock right now. The thank you that I stamped is from the, the um, petal palette set that was in last year's catalog and is in this year's catalog again it's a it's a two bundle set um it's a really huge stamp set and um i added some of our pearls accents because i thought that would be really pretty for a um a little wedding or bridal shower and um this one could also be for a bridal shower or my husband pointed out that this might be really pretty for um Valentine's Day and I used paper from for um from the uh petal palette no I'm sorry from the uh let's see which petal promenade there's so many petals um petal promenade designer series paper which has actual photography art to it um which it the the uh florals are just beautiful on this and uh, the ribbon on top is our, um, it's our Whisper White polka dot ribbon. And it's uh, made of tulle. And the little Love, Love, Love is from the, um, the new Country Home stamp set. And I stamped that using um, Mango not me, Melon Mambo. I'm sorry. Um, Melon Mambo ink. You'll have to excuse me. This is my first live and I'm a little nervous, um, but I think we're doing okay. So that's another idea for either a bridal shower or Valentine's Day. So you have that one. And speaking of showers, I couldn't leave out a baby shower. So this adorable little box um, I made using the Twinkle Twinkle Designer Series paper. And I used a little bit of blue 1 8 inch ribbon that was actually in our Occasions catalog um, last spring. And they don't have it anymore, but I'm sure you can find another ribbon that's close to that. Or you can use any ribbon, um, especially if you know the gender of the baby. 
um, you can match it to the gender of the baby. But the, the papers in this set are gender neutral, so you can use them for, for either a boy or a girl or twins, if one of each or both or whatever. Um, now I use the, the panel die cut and I stamp the welcome from the animal outing stamp set. So I'm gonna use the welcome and the little one because I thought that that would be really cute. And this is an adorable stamp, stamp set. This is one of my favorite new stamp sets from the catalog. Um, so the welcome is stamped in Night of Navy ink. And then I sponged on the side with petal pink. And I used another one of the little tags, the die cut tags. And I, I stamped the little one in soft sea foam ink and sponged a little bit of the pool party because I had it out doing the bridal one. And this little um, silver and petal pink um, baker's twine is a little leftover scrap from the last box that I want to show you that I made with um, this die cut. And of course, I had to do a happy birthday because that's the most most common thing that you would um, do paper crafts for is usually birthday, birthday card or whatever. Um, so this could be a birthday party favor or a little a little box for a little something something. Um, which happens to be the name of my blog, a little something something at blogspot.com. Um, and the happy birthday and the little squirrels there are from the Detailed with Love stamp set from the catalog. And I used um, Pacific, um, let's see. Pacific Point, I can never think of the whole word. Pacific Point blue ink and the pink of course is the petal pink and I use some of our artisan pearls in the petal pink also um, just as a little bling for that box since we have the silver and petal pink baker's twine. And all of these things can be found um, in our catalogs. If you don't have a catalog and need one, contact me or contact your Stampin' Up! demonstrator. If you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you live in the United States, I would love to be your demonstrator, so contact me. Um, as I said, I will have all of these up on my blog and I will link it here on my page. This will also, after I clean it up, um, will be uploaded to my YouTube channel and I'll have a link to that there too. On my blog, I'll have um, links where you can purchase all of these. And um, here again are our Halloween boxes. And as I said, if you liked, shared, or commented on this, um, I will send these to you. So thank you so much for uh, coming by tonight for my first live. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. And there you have it. Um, feel free to let me know what you might like to see in the future on these live videos. I'm going to try to consistently bring these to you every week. Um, and thank you for joining me. Good night and many blessings. Bye-bye.